Merry Christmas, everyone. Christmas 2021. Oh, it's been quite a year. Let's work toward making uh, 2022 a better year. Anyway, it is Christmas. And uh, I was thinking, uh, which is always a dangerous thing, Christmas is magic. Christmas time is magic. And it, I think it has very little to do with anybody's religion. Uh, look at it this way. There was this Will Ferrell movie uh, where he, he's a stock car racer or something. I forget the title of the movie. But he's sort of a Southern baptist -y kind of Christian guy. And uh, he, uh, at, the, at the dinner table, when he says grace or says a prayer, he always prays to the baby Jesus. Baby Jesus looked down upon us. So no matter, no matter what the circumstances of the prayer or everything, uh, he, uh, he prays it to baby Jesus. And that's very funny, and you chuckle every time he does it. But the, the idea of, of the worship of the baby seems to have a more universal appeal than the worship of a, uh, of a prophet or the worship of a martyr or the worship of a, of a uh, mythological uh, abstract God. We love the baby. We love identifying, celebrating the baby. And that pretty much has everything to do with something much more uh, fundamental in our souls than just any sort of a doctrine or dogma of any particular religion. We love the baby. And people of my generation, uh, for whom, at least in the, the United States and middle class uh, uh, environment, Christmas was insanely magical. We loved Christmas. We felt spiritually uh, uh, in, in tune, energized. Uh, by Christmas and the idea of this this awesome birth of the of the sun strikes deep in the core of our uh, uh, racial memory. So this is what, no matter what your religion is, even if you're just opposed to the doctrines of Christianity and and all of that still a bell rings in your uh, in your heart about Christmas and uh, so it has everything to do with the age change I believe because in in Thelema God the God of this aeon is a baby is a child and I'm going to read a short little thing Alistair Crowley wrote in the Equinox of the Gods. But uh, first I'm going to read something <laughs> that Duquette wrote. <laughs> uh, sort of the, the epigram for uh, Angels, Demons, and Gods of the New Millennium. The gods of one age become the devils of the age to follow. Let me say that again. The gods of one age become the devils of the age to follow. The priests look forward to the coming age and see only the end of the world. The gods of one age 
become the devils of the age to follow. The priests look forward to their coming age and see only the end of the world. Another thing I wrote somewhere, <laughs> I don't know, in a fit of uh, reverie or wisdom or folly, that the, the adherents, people who adhere to the present magical formula of the age, uh, manifest that formula on the earth. So the, the let's say the, the age of, uh, of Osiris, the age that was just before this, the, the adherence to that Osirian formula manifest that formula at work in the, in the world and in humanity. And if we could see the, the, that age of Horus or age of uh, Osiris manifesting uh, in Western civilization, we could see it uh, uh, start to crystallize and develop uh, and eventually uh, uh, decay and manifest and solidify and crystallize in the, the, the monstrous movement that was the nightmare of the Crusades. The adherents of the, the formula of Osiris manifest it on the earth. But the adepts of the age, their job is to work to bring in the next age, to bring in the next stage of evolution. So if we're going to still use that, that crusade uh, example, the, the monstrousness of this age of the dying God manifesting as the Crusades. But out of that Crusades came a little light, okay? St. Francis came out of the Crusades, okay? The Crusades, the crucible of the Crusades lit up St. Francis. And St. Francis, with his work, with his illumination, worked toward bringing in the next age. So currently we've got the age of Horus, which is wild, crazy, catastrophic. That's the formula. And the adherents of that formula are busy at work manifesting that formula on the, on the earth. But the adepts of the age of Horus are working their ass off to manifest and bring in the next age, which is the age of Mott, which is balance, which is justice, which is equality. So can you see what I'm talking about? The adherents, the people are manifesting the, the, the formula, but the adepts are working to bring in the next one. So we can look around us and say, oh, God, yes, this is the age of Hor Horus. Look at the, the, the nightmare. Look at the violence. Look at the bloodshed. Uh, look at the c catastrophe. Is that, is that your age? You know? Well, it's that age manifesting. That's for damn sure. But the adepts, the people that are actually working, springing, stepping off of that formula, are working to bring in the next age, the age where Humacus or, or, or Mott, if you will. So, in the Equinox of the Gods, which explains uh, is Crowley's uh, attempt, at least, to uh, uh, describe the circumstances surrounding the reception of the Book of the Law, uh, he summarizes the whole, the whole thing, in chapter in chapter eight, and it's only like two pages, and I'm going to finish with that today. The summary of the case: 
In this revelation is the basis of the future aeon. Within the memory of man, we've had the pagan period, the worship of nature, of Isis, of the mother, of the past, the Christian period, the worship of man, of Osiris, the present. The first period is simple, quiet, easy, and pleasant. The material ignores the spiritual. The second is of suffering and death. The spiritual strives to ignore the material. Christianity and all cognate uh, religions worship death, glorify suffering, deify corpses. The new aeon is the worship of the spirit, spiritual, made one with the material, of Horus the child of the future. Isis was liberty, Osiris bondage. But the new liberty is that of Horus. Osiris conquered her because uh, she did not understand him. Horus avenges both his father and his mother. This Horus is a twin, two in one. Horus and Harpocrates are one. And they are also, they are also one with Set or Apophis, the destroyer of Osiris. It is by the destruction of the principle of death that they are born. The establishment of this new aeon, this new fundamental principle, is the great work now to be accomplished in the world. Frater Perdurabo, to whom this revelation was made with so many signs and wonders, was himself unconvinced. He struggled against it for years. Not until the completion of his own initiation at the end of 1909 did he understand how perfectly he was bound to carry out this work. Again and again he turned away from it, took it up for a few days or hours, then laid it aside. He even attempted to destroy its value to nullify the result. Again and again, the unsleeping might of the watchers drove him back to the work. It was at the very moment when he thought himself to have escaped that he found himself fixed forever with no possibility of again turning aside for the, for the fraction of a second from the path. The history of this must one day be told by more, a more vivid voice. Properly considered, it is a history of, con of a continuous miracle. Enough if it is now said that in this law lies the whole future. It is the law of liberty, and those who refuse it proclaim themselves slaves. And as slaves, they shall be chained and flogged. It is the law of love, and those who refuse it declare themselves to be children of hate. And their hate shall return upon them and consume them with its unending tortures. It is the law of life, and those who refuse it shall be subject to death. And death shall catch them unawares. Even their life shall be a living death. It is the law of light, and those who refuse it thereby make themselves dark forever. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Refuse this and fall under the curse of destiny. Divide will against itself. The result is impotence and strife, strife in vain. The law condemns no man, except the law, and everything is lawful. 
refuse the law and put yourself beyond its pale. It is the law that Jesus Christ, or rather the Gnostic tradition, which the Christ legend is a degeneration, attempted to teach. But nearly every word he said was misinterpreted and garbled by his enemies, particularly by those who called themselves his disciples. In any case, the Aeon was not ready for a law of freedom. Of all his followers, only St. Augustine appears to have got even a glimmer of what he meant. A further attempt to teach this law was made through Sir Edward Kelly at the end of the 16th century. The bondage of orthodoxy prevented his words from being heard or understood. In many other ways, has the spirit of truth striven with man, and partial shadows of this truth have been the greatest allies of science and philosophy. Only now has success been attained. A perfect vehicle was found and the message enshrined in a jeweled casket. That is to say, in a book with the injunction, change not as much as the style of a letter. This book is reproduced in facsimile in order that there shall be no possibility of corrupting it. And uh, in this particular uh, edition, excuse my digression, in the back is actually an envelope containing single sheets of uh, paper with the, the handwritten facsimile reproduced. Okay, hang on just a second. Here then, we have an absolutely fixed and definite standpoint for the foundation of a universal religion. We have the key to the resolution of all human problems, both philosophical and practical. If we have seemed to labor as proof, uh, our love must be the excuse for our infirmity. For we know well that which is written in the book, quote, success is thy proof. We ask no more than one witness and we call upon time to take the oath and testify to the truth of our plea. So, that's our Christmas message from the Equinox of the Gods. Uh, you might want to uh, search your uh, search your soul at this time uh, if you uh, th think that uh, uh, like to consider yourself a Thelemite and uh, uh, a person trying to be in tune with the new formula. Uh, you should ask yourself if you're currently the adherent to the formula or if you're aspiring to be an adept of the formula. And on that note, Merry Christmas, everyone. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will.